Our opening hymn is Hymn 400, What Wondrous Love Is This? Into your presence we come, Father God, as your children have done throughout the centuries, in vast cathedrals, parish churches, chapels, homes, warehouses, converted cinemas, in lonely, isolated places, alone or gathered together with others. Your church is wherever your people meet together in worship, in fellowship, and in prayer. Your presence is discernible wherever your spirit is allowed to enter. Be with, Be with us now, us now loving, loving Father. Into your presence we come, Father God, mindful of our own failings, our thoughts, words, and actions that have shown nothing of your love. Forgive us, loving Father. Into your presence we come, Father God, remembering the sacrifice of your Son on a cruel cross that we might know freedom from the guilt of sin and be made right again with our Creator. Thank you, loving Father. Our confession and forgiveness. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Love has its source in you, Creator God, flows from you like an ocean into a world as unyielding as any shoreline cliff and like the ocean. That's which batters, erodes, and wears away even the hardest stone. Your love persists, finds cracks and inlets in hardened hearts, flows inside and works a miracle. Who would think that water was more powerful than granite? Love mightier than the hardest heart. Thank you, Creator God, for the power of your love. And now we'll have our psalm.
To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Canticle, a song of humility. Come, let us return to the Lord who has who torn, torn us, us and, and will heal, heal us. us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, we'll rise up, will raise us up. That we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sun sunrise. He will come to us like the showers. Like the spring rains that water the earth. O oh, Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist. Like the dew that goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. And my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not my sacrifice. And the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Amen. Our first reading, please. Our first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9, reading through verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our hymn is the right hand of God. Now it's time for our second reading. The second reading is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered for the sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him.
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A canticle, a song of the word of the Lord from Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 11. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and return not thither, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and pr prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our third reading is taken from the Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came down from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Lord. to God. So uh, history, it's, uh, it's Black History Month, this, uh, this that we're celebrating this Sunday. So uh, I have a problem with history. History was never my good subject in, in school. It was all, for me. It was always science and um, and and math and things like that. That was my. Those are my fortes. But history, all of those things, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it, and I came this close to failing. Never failed anything in my life. But grade ten history, I was this close to failing my grade ten history. I have never in my life had such a boring class. It was one, it was a European history. Uh, so it was one king after another and one battle after another. And I had to try to figure out the dates and the battles and the kings and none of it made any sense to me. It was the most boring thing I ever had to experience. I was not good at it. And I was, it was not my most shining moment. I managed to squeak through, but not by much. And I was thinking to myself, well, so many people I know love history. They just love it. They, you know, they live by it. They read like historical fiction. I, I read science fiction. I don't read historical fiction, but so many people are into it. And I'm thinking, why, what do they see that I don't see? And I had some conversations with people who love history. And the, the thing that's that they seem to be connected to is the gaps between those historical facts and the human experience. So they, they read about King Henry VIII and for them, it's not just, oh yeah, he did this and he did that. It's like, what was life like back then? Like, how do I, can I see how their life was, was like my life, but different. And it's so fascinating. They did all these things that did all those things. So it became, it becomes very important to see what's in between the facts and how that, how can we respond to that? And I was thinking about that, uh, th that idea of history and how we see that in the gospel today, because we have the gospel of Mark and we have the, the, the historical facts of Jesus. He came from Galilee. He was baptized by John in the Jordan. He had temptation in the desert. Uh, he started his ministry after John the Baptist was, was killed. So we have those, the bare bones of that. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, if we just had that, 
that's not much to go on. Like just those bare bones of, of Jesus's life. It's very con contracted, very, very con constrained. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that doesn't really allow us to really express or to connect with in a meaningful way, those things that are beautiful and important and wonderful. Well, luckily for us, we've got the other gospel readings, which kind of flesh out these things. And we have, you know, the traditions, we have all of the other things that we know about Jesus's life. So it allows us to fill in the blanks in between these, these two areas, the, the, like, oh, he was baptized. And then like two sentences later, he's going off onto his ministry. But we know that there is something important that happened between those events and we, we have access to those and we can we can relate to those and they become something that's important and necessary to us in our lives. And I think that it's kind of normal for anything that we know. If we only have a sketch of something, it's very hard for us to relate to things in a meaningful way. And it's very important for us to understand something just past that sketchy little description of what's going on and that happens to us as uh, in the gospel reading but it also happens to us in the real world if we don't know much or if we only have a sketchy little idea of what's going on or of what's happened in the past then it doesn't allow us to really connect uh, in a meaningful way to the events that happen so it becomes uh, either we we ignore it altogether we think oh you know this isn't this isn't very interesting it's just a list of facts and it's not important it's not interesting or we start to put our own prejudice our own ideas we fill in the blanks with our own ideas and certainly this happens in, in scripture all the time people who don't know too much about christianity start filling in the blanks in the christian story with their own prejudice and their own their own thoughts about what it might be and their own uh, misinformation and I think that when we're looking at any kind of a, a history, that's a danger for us. And today we're, we're celebrating Black History Month. And I think that sometimes we have the same, the same process happens. We only have the bare bones of what was going on. We don't really know too much about it. And so for, for many, in many cases, we just think, oh, well, you know, it's not relevant to me. It's something that happened a long time in the past. And how can that be relevant to me? But of course we, we know that the more we know about something, the more we can see our own lives reflected in that. And I think certainly in, in, in North America, the Black experience is something that's been so fundamental to our lives uh, as North Americans and in Canada, uh, for certain, uh, the idea of what the history of the Black, of black people in Canada is something that's very important for us to know, not just the bare bones, but something that, that's more deeper understanding of that because it informs us all. Uh, certainly in St. Thomas, our congregation is filled with people who are both black and white and coming from different, from different experiences. And the more we know about each other, the easier it is for us to both love each other and respect each other and understand each other. And I think that's one of the things that we have to remember. As Christians, we are here to love our our neighbors to love our brothers and sisters and to understand uh how it is that their life experience is precious to god this time in lent this is the time in lent that we are coming closer to god that we are turning our hearts and minds to a way of coming closer to god and that is why we look to the experience our each of us our experiences as a way of illuminating God's relationship to us, not only as a community, but to us individually. And to that end, we are going to be hearing now about something about Black History Month and Reverend Stanley is going to be guiding us in that right now. So <coughs> Reverend Stanley, please. Thank you, Reverend Carla. From its inception, the focus of Black History Month has been the annual celebration of achievements by African-Americans honoring their triumphs and struggles throughout US history. As such, Black History Month recreates a story filled with heroes, small and large, who endured and persevered sometimes to the point of death. As expected, the civil rights movement and the artistic, cultural and political achievements of African-Americans are the major topics. 
The importance of this celebration has spread beyond Blacks in the US to substantial numbers of Black people elsewhere in the world. This change allows for a fuller understanding of the relationship between Black and white people, socially and politically, wherever they interact. Black history did not begin in recent times in the United States, but in ancient times in Africa. People connected by their common African history and ancestry have created Black history throughout a range of places across the globe, including the United States, Canada, South and Central America, the Caribbean, and most recently, Europe, with the influx of thousands and thousands of refugees, many of whom are Black. Reflecting on my school days in Barbados, the concentration of, on English and European history in the curriculum of the upper school in preparation for university signal that our political leaders and overseas examiners were not proud enough of our African heritage. The result was that the teaching of Caribbean history was thought to promote, to promote too narrow and insular a perspective. Things have now changed radically and learning about our past is a fundamental part of the entire school curriculum. History is often reduced to a handful of memorable moments and events. In Black history, these events often include courageous stories like those of the Underground Railroad and historic moments like the famous I Have a Dream speech by Dr. Martin Luther King. But these are only a few of the significant and, and important events to know and remember. One of the reasons why Black History Month is highly important is that so many American students have studied history in school for years and graduated from high school, knowing almost nothing about the rich heritage contained in American history. They know about slavery, segregation, and that George Washington Carver was a brave and bright black scientist who invented peanut butter. Great, <clears throat> I love peanut butter. But black history is more than in the invention of peanut butter. Many of these students would never have heard of giants of history like Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, Brooker T. Washington, and W.E.B. Du Bois were it not for Black History Month. This annual celebration was exposed to people like Thurgood Marshall, who argued the case before the Supreme Court that outlawed segregation, which was then known by the slogan, separate but equal. Today, I would like to focus on two individuals, on Fannie Lou Hamer, and Tracy Abrams. Fannie Lou was born in 1917 and she died in 1977. Now she is one of the many African Americans who lived and whose life deserved to be celebrated. Fannie was a civil rights activist whose passionate depiction of her own suffering in a racist society helped focus attention on the plight of African Americans throughout the South. In 1964, working with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, Fannie helped to organize the Freedom Summer African American Voter Registration Drive in her native Mississippi. At the Democratic National Convention later that year, she was part of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, an integrated group of activists who openly challenged the legality of Mississippi's all white segregated, segregated delegation. Fannie was the daughter of sharecroppers. Now, I don't know if you know what a, who, what a sharecropper is. A sharecropper is some person who doesn't own any land, but is allowed to farm by a landlord. And the landlord extracts a third a half, maybe three quarters of the crop that is produced. 
So she was the daughter of sharecroppers. And she began working in the fields at an early age. Her family struggled financially and often went hungry. Fanny Lou continued to work just to get by. In the summer of 1962, she made a life-changing decision to attend a protest meeting. She met civil rights activists who encouraged African-Americans to register to vote. Fanalu became active in helping with the voter registration. She dedicated her life to the fight for civil rights, working for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. This organization was comprised mainly of African-American students who engage in civil disobedience to fight racial segregation and injustice in the South. These acts were often met with violent responses by angry whites. <clears throat> During the course of her activist career, Fanilou was threatened, arrested, beaten, and even shot at. But none of these things ever deterred her from her work. In 1964, she helped found the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, which was established in opposition to her state's all-white delegation to that year's Democratic, Democratic Convention. She brought the civil rights struggle in Mississippi to the, intention, to the attention of the entire nation during a televised session at the convention. The next year, Fanny ran for Congress in Mississippi, but she was unsuccessful in her bid. Along with her political activism, Hamer worked to help the poor and families in need in her Mississippi community. She also set up organizations to increase business opportunities for minorities and to provide childcare and other family services. Fanny Hamer died of cancer on March 14, 1977. Her tombstone in her hometown of Ruleville, Mississippi, is inscribed with these famous words. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. The next person I want to talk about is much more modern to us. And her name is Stacy Abrams. She's a politician, she's a lawyer, a voting rights activist and author. She served in the Georgia House of Representatives from 2007 to 2017, serving as minority leader from 211 to 217. Born in 1973, she reminds me to some degree of Fannie Lou because of the common focus on voter rights. Political strategist, lawyer, and activist. She became the first black woman in the US to be a major party's nominee for governor. But voter suppression of people of color wreaked such havoc on Georgia's voting population during the election of that Abrams lost the election. And daunted, Abrams founded the voting rights nonprofit organization named Fair Fight Action. Both the New York Times and the Washington Post credit this political strategist with achieving an estimated 800,000 new voter registrations, which led to a large boost in Democratic votes and victory in Georgia. What we accomplish in Georgia, says Tracy Abrams, can be replicated in other states through consistent order organizing, investing in state parties, Abrams is quite relentless in advocating that when people come together in mass numbers to make their voices heard, they can force change. 
When asked what to say to those who feel their votes make a difference, sorry, won't make a difference, the answer she gives is that it's their responsibility to keep voting anyway. I don't vote because I believe it changes the world. I vote because I know silence absolutely doesn't. Stacey Abrams stresses that African Americans need to keep fighting, protesting, advocating, and engaging with representatives or their voices will not succeed in accomplishing the things they demand. Stacey, Stacey Abrams will go down in history for her relentless fight in turning out the black vote in the state of Georgia, contributing to the Joe Biden's victory there. Now, despite the very noteworthy successes of African Americans, the history of race relations in North America is quite shameful. But because we stand in the light of the gospel, which can release shame and bring restoration and wholeness. We continue to share our story so that the next generation can learn and strive to build upon prior successes and increase the gains in racial reconciliation that have already been made. Without reservation, the history of black people in America is a richly woven narrative the themes that help us to better understand God's plan for humanity and to see tangible evidence of his deliverance, love and blessings. Not only is Black History Month a time of reflection, it is also a time of rejoicing for all the good that has been achieved. We celebrate this history to reflect on the direct action used by courageous groups and the bravery shown in the face of extreme racially motivated violence. This allows us to think back on the progress, progress that was made in a relatively short period of time. However, this also helps us to recognize how much more work there is to do. My brothers and sisters, my message is to remember and celebrate in order to inspire hope for a better future. Contemporary successes that are built on the foundation of African Americans who've gone before gives us hope for a better future. As St. Paul reminds us, hope is a confident expectation regarding the unseen and future. Our biblical ancestors held on to hope when circumstances and the actions of others said otherwise. They had no evidence and no reason to believe things would get better. So they held desperately to hope. They based their hope on the fact that God will continue being what he has always been, namely faithful to his promises. God will successfully complete whatever he has begun and there will be complete justice, love, and equity established between peoples. When we begin to appreciate a people made in the image of God and teach our children to do the same, we create a legacy of hope for racial reconciliation, both inside and outside the church. The church's recognition of black history is based on our sincere love for humanity which flows from the love we have received from God in Christ. As believers, we are interconnected, interconnected. So they ignored the injustices black history documents is to ignore the gospel and God himself. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Bible contains countless historical narratives intended to remind us of the trials and events that shaped our spiritual heritage. Black History Month serves us and those who come after us much like, much like these memorial narratives in Holy Scriptures. It reminds us to show honor, to inspire hope, and not to repeat the past. I gather from today's gospel that Mark is telling us that through Jesus, as a result of victories, he will win over powers of chaos and destruction 
harmony will come to earth. Furthermore, Mark is reassuring us that just as God will not leave his beloved son entirely vulnerable to the ravages of the world, neither would he allow any part of his human creation to be constantly crushed and abused. In fact, through Jesus, as a result of victories won over powers of chaos and destruction, God will cause harmony to come between the peoples of different races wherever they live. Mark is telling those who listen that God is bringing new realities into existence. Through his actions and words, Jesus himself demonstrates what these realities look like. So let us pray that each celebration of Black history may sharpen our memories so that every month, not only February, is one in which we see ourselves as true brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carla and Stanley. And appropriately enough, our next hymn is We All Are One in Mission. Please remain muted as we say our creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, who he has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now Guy will say our prayers. Dear Lord, let us pray. Circle us, Lord. Circle us with the light of your presence within the dark world. Enable us to become or to overcome fear and temptation. Enable us to be victors over sin and despair. Enable us to become that which you would desire. Take a moment to pray silently. We pray for all who minister in your name. We pray for Reverend Carla, Assistant Priest Stanley, our lay leaders, and everyone who ministers in your name. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, Circle us with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord. Circle our church family within the shelter of your outstretched arms. Protect them in each moment of their daily lives. Protect them in the decisions that they face. Protect their homes and relationships. Today, we pray especially for healing care for Robert Palmer, Dave, Valbir Sani, Ken Burke, Leroy Cumberbatch, Francis, Christine Blackett, Lyndon Rogers, Sandy Brambo, Lucette Charles, Steve Jordan, Nancy Kamel, Mary Blunt, Hilary Hyde, Greta, Lillian Jackson, Valerie. We pray for the departed and for all who are grieving. We pray for ongoing support for Jean-Noël Rocher, Kelvin Duncan, Mary File, Margaret Green, Carmen Fredericks, Alice, Mel Doherty, Bernetta Drakes, Althea Caesar, Elvalina Pert, Marguerite, Estina Taylor, Phyllis Walcott, Josh and Andrea, Kuren Skinner, Fran Gahan, Elsie Adams, Ivan Austin, Pamela King, Audrey and Erla Sandiford, Hedy and Carell, Bill Griffith, Barbara and family. And we pray for everyone who is separated from their loved ones. And we pray for Jocelyn and Pascal and for all refugees that they may find hope and feel God's love every day. Amen. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, Circle, Circle our, our families, families with the light, with the light, of, your light of your presence. Circle us, Lord. Circle this world with the joy of your salvation. Where there is sickness and disease, bring healing. Where there is hunger and despair, bring hope. Where there is torture and oppression, bring release. Let us pray silently for a moment. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle, circle this, world this world with the, with the light, light of, of your presence. presence. Let us say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. Thy, thy will, will, be will be done on earth as, as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us Give us this day our daily bread. 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 And, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom the power, and, power and, glory, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. For each step that we might take, be our guide, O Lord of life. For each Lord of that we might bear be our strength, O Lord of life. For each mountain we might face, be our power, O Lord of life. For each river that might impede, be our safety, O Lord of life. For each place where we might rest, be our peace, O Lord of life. For each sunrise and sunset, be our joy, O Lord of life. 
Our final hymn is hymn 484, In Christ There Is No East or West. And now before I let uh, Norm continue with the announcements, Lillian, uh, Lillian Jackson would like to say a word. So Lillian, could you unmute and uh, it's all yours. Yes, Scarla, good morning. Good morning, Rector Carla Holmes and all members of St. Thomas's Anglican Church. It gives me gr enormous pleasure to join with you this morning to celebrate the first Sunday in Lent 2021. God bless us all. Amen. And let Amen. the doors of St. Thomas's Church remain open indefinitely. God be with you all. Amen. And same to you, Lillian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. And our announcements today. The St. Thomas Annual Vestry Meeting will take place next Sunday on Zoom following the 10 a.m. service, Zoom service. You heard from Carla. Next Sunday, and yes. um, so if you would like a hard copy of the, uh, the vestry, Annual Vestry uh, Bulletin, uh, okay. please contact the office. Um, the Lenten Devotions, Reverend Carla's Curated List for use on this Lenten journey. You can find links of those resources in St. Thomas yeah. Connects beginning this week. St. Thomas will be offering a Lenten Revive group for those who might need some extra spiritual nourishment during this difficult time. You know, in Lent, we like to add something. Perhaps this is something you can add. It's a five-week program, which includes Bible study video discussion. Let us know if you'd be interested in joining us. And there's the Monday at 7.30 p.m. Yeah, this is the last call for that because uh, we start tomorrow. So if you do are on the on the fence about it, I have, I have seven people that have signed up. And if you're on the fence about it, let me know like today or tomorrow because we're starting tomorrow. Go ahead. Puzzled by the parables. So that's ongoing. People are enjoying it. The information is there. You don't need to have started in the beginning. You can join any time. Um, uh, the information is there for you. St. Thomas can now accept e-transfers, and e-transfers are great. I use them now that rather than an envelope, so please uh, take a look at it. Don't forget to put where you want your money to go in the information section, or Nancy will be calling. Nancy, you're going too fast. Hello, Nancy. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Sapir. Set up St. Thomas funds at gmail.com as a new recipient. No security question answer is needed. This is for the e-transfers and enter your name and what your donation is for. Doing so will ensure that your donations are recorded correctly for your tax receipt at the end of the year. So remember to do that because we want you to get your, your exact tax receipt. Please note that our Zoom service is recorded and uploaded to YouTube each week. Okay. And if anybody has it, is there more, Nancy, below? Or? Yes. Um, just a, just a, a memo for um, Funscript. 
it, we are ongoing, but people do need to contact me. If you just send your 